Hey Logan, Vinyl Community, Matt here. And uh, this might be kind of a long video, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, pour yourself a drink and uh, let's, uh, let's settle in. <laughs> um, so, got a lot of vinyl to show. Uh, and um, yeah, let's just get started. So, uh, first off, I went to uh, a couple of thrift stores at the weekend. I took my one year old daughter. And, <laughs> I found uh, just a few things. Um, out of Goodwill, I found these three DVDs, which I was kind of uh, stoked to find. These are um, DVDs of Bert Sugarman's Midnight Special. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, this was a, a US show that was broadcast late at night in the 70s. I think it went into the very early 80s. And it was essentially a um, um, late night concert of sorts but they had like all the top artists of the day it was kind of crazy and each one of these DVDs has um, a selection of those artists now it turns out I didn't know know this at the time but you can actually buy a box set with all of these there's um oh like 10 or a dozen in total I just have these three uh, these were 2.99 each which um is uh, really on the it's really the top end of what I would pay for a DVD to be honest but um that's okay you know the box set would cost i don't remember i don't know like 40 50 bucks or something so first up um this edition is the million sellers and um i mean there's a lot of great artists on here roy orbison fleetwood mac peter frampton john denver and cass elliott the Bee Gees, linda ronstadt the guess who al green aretha franklin david bowie blondie labelle the steve Miliband, billy joel and donna summer and then the next one, this is the 1973 edition. So these are all uh, artists that appeared on the show in 1973. We have the Doobie Brothers, Billy Preston, uh, Jim Croce, Gladys Knight and the Pips, uh, T-Rex, Loggins and Messina, Linda Ronstadt again, uh, Arjun, Helen Reddy, Steely Dan, Johnny Nash, Seals and Crofts, Anne Murray, War and Edgar Winter. And then this is the 1974 edition, so artists that appeared on the show in 1974. Um, Ike and Tina Turner, Barry White, Sly and the Family Stone, David Essex, The OJs, Marvin Gaye, Golden Earring, Bill Withers, James Brown, Gordon Lightfoot, Gladys Knight and B.B. King, uh, Maria Muldaur, Neil Sedaka, Redbone and Aerosmith. So, you know, that's not too shabby, right? Um, so I might, you know, I'll keep an eye out to see if I can find any other, um, any other editions of it. But uh, yeah, I was kind of stoked to find that. And then I went to um, another thrift store, uh, like an independent place, and um, picked up uh, U2's Rattling Home uh, for five bucks. I thought this was a pretty good deal. Uh, the condition is, um, it's okay. It's fe solid, a solid VG Plus condition, you know. There's a little wear on it, but the, actually the records look really good. Um, of course, this is a mixture of a studio album and live album, and it's a double record set. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have it, gatefold. Yeah, for five bucks, I, I couldn't couldn't pass it up. And then just tonight, I stopped by a Goodwill. Uh, it's one that I've had a lot of good scores at before, um, and uh, they had some new stuff in. Nothing too spectacular, but I did buy a couple of records. Um, First up, we got um, uh, Matthew Wilder, I Don't Speak the Language, 80s album, of course, best known for his song uh, Break My Stride, which is the opening track on the album. I do have Break My Stride on 7-inch um, single, but it's not in great condition, and so I was kind of pleased to find the album. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's in nice condition. It's on um, the Epic label. When did this come out, 84 or something? 83 okay uh, it's on the, the blue epic label right there and uh, yeah the, the and this is one of the last goodwills in Southern California that that is still reasonably priced um, most of the other ones in this area have jacked the price of the vinyl up to usually an absolute minimal will be, will be 299 um, but it's it's not uncommon to find them for Three ninety nine, four ninety nine, eight ninety nine. It's kind of crazy. So, 
yeah, this is kind of one of the last holdouts. And then I got another album as well. I got um, uh, Humans Live by Howard Jones. Uh, he's one of my favorite 80s artists, actually. I really, uh, I do prefer the songs that are on the album uh, Dream Into Action, which I, I already own on vinyl. But this has several hits on it. Um, what is Love is probably the best known. But uh, Pearl in the Shell, Hide and Seek, and New Song were also pretty big hits for Howard. And uh, this is on the Electra label right there. And this came out in 84. So, uh, yeah, and again, for two bucks, I, I was like, you know, you know, I can't leave that sitting there. I gotta get it. And it's in nice condition, actually. Tiny bit of ring wear at the top, but nothing, nothing bad. So, yeah. All right, now on to the, the big call that uh, I mentioned in, a, in my last video, actually, that I was expecting. So I made a video um, a few weeks ago, which were, included a, uh, a pretty large haul of mostly 45s that I got off eBay from one seller. And uh, I, I went back to him. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a return customer. He... Um, he was advertising more records. I He actually sent out an email to everybody, which is a good idea. People who, I guess, had bought from him before. And I've seen other sellers do this too. Uh, as it happened, earlier that day, I had already checked to see if he had anything else for sale. And he did. So I put in a bunch of bids and I ended up winning um, almost 50. <laughs> I did. But they weren't expensive. Most of them only cost just over a dollar. So... You know, it wasn't too bad because his starting price was 99p. That's 99 pennies, um, and uh, uh, quite. In fact, probably three quarters of these I ended up winning for that starting price. So uh, it's mostly 45s, but we do have a small stack of 12-inch records here as well. Let's have a, a quick look. So starting off with, and these are mostly 80s. There's a couple of 70s, couple of 90s, but otherwise it's it's all 80s. <laughs> There's um, there's some like classic stuff, and there's also some real cheesy stuff in this. <laughs> anyway, uh, starting off with uh, "Living in a Box," "Blow the House Down," 12-inch single. Um, their best-known song is uh, is the song "Living in a Box." It's the same as a band name, kind of funny. But uh, this this particular single was released in uh, '89, yeah, in 1989, early 1989, and it's a good track. I always liked it. I loved it when I was a kid. It's a, it's a, oh, a pop song, a pop dance song, yeah. Uh, next up, we have a much more recent song, um, Flippin' Phil featuring Kelly uh, Lorena, True Love Never Dies. This is from 2001 or 2002, I think. Um, 2001. Eh, it's a dance club song, you know. This was really cheap. It's not in very good condition. Actually, the record's okay, but the sleeve's not in very good condition. Um, next up, uh, another 80s, <laughs> 80s classic. Um, this is a cover version of Rock the Boat by Forrest. Um, the original, of course, was by... Um, oh, jeez. Who did the original Rock the Boat? Uh, I ought to know. Um... Anyway, it suddenly escaped me, but in any event, somebody will tell me, but it's a kind of a disco classic. But yeah, this is a cover version um, released in 1982. And I just noticed that the remix is, be is by Ben Librand, which uh, I didn't know, so that's kind of cool. It's, um, it's like a 12 inch mix on here. I really like the sleeve, it's just too bad. It's not in better condition. There's a huge amount of ring wear on it, but Again, these were cheap. The, the records are all fine, at least at, at a glance. I had a quick look at them all. Um, next up, we have 12-inch single, Magnum, Days of No Trust. This is a great track. Uh, it's like uh, uh, it's like a hair band. It's, it's a rock song. Um, I always liked it. Always liked uh, Days of No Trust. Um, when, uh, back in my 20s, I used to play on Xbox Live on on the, the original Xbox, okay, so like the early 2000s. And my my handle on there was No Trust, and it came from this song. <laughs> it was unfortunate that people mistook it and kept calling me Not Rust, but that was, uh, that's another story. Um, 
Uh, and next up we have Don't Laugh, Steps, <laughs> Deeper Shade of Blue. It's a good song, it's a good pop song, what the heck. Um, it says 1999 and 2000 on it, I don't know which it is, 99 I guess. And again, this is another one, 99p, what the heck. Um, that's all the 12 inch singles. Um, I, the, the last uh, 12 inch is actually an album. And that is now that's what I call music, the Christmas album. Um, I, I think this was only a couple of dollars as well. This has been on, been on my wish list for a while. I do collect the now albums on vinyl. I have, um, well, this will be the 19th one that I have on vinyl. And, uh, and I have most of the other ones on CD too. But uh, yeah, this was released in 1985. So of course the lead single is Band Aid. Do they know it's Christmas? That was huge back then. Um, and uh, you know, it, it includes some stuff that maybe wouldn't be on there now, like Gary Glitter, <laughs> another rock and roll Christmas. It's kind of a classic Christmas song, but uh, you know, what with his uh, brushes with the law, let's say. Um, those of you who aren't familiar can look it up, but uh, I don't think he would be included on a, any modern compilation. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, the now the Christmas album. Um, uh, it's yeah, it's on a kind of generic white label right there not not too interesting but yeah it's got some classics on there we've got like wham last christmas um queen thank god it's christmas the beach boys little saint nick um paul mccartney wonderful christmas time uh, i think i think john lennon's on here too is he yeah john lennon happy xmas war is over etc etc um 18 tracks in total nine on each side so i thought I thought for a couple of bucks that was a pretty pretty good find. Okay, now we have a stack of I counted them earlier and I think it was was it forty one or forty two? <laughs> forty two seven inch singles. So this is what I mean by, you know, strap in. Pour yourself a, a glass or something because uh, yeah, here we go. Alright. We're gonna we're gonna start off with the kind of classic non non cheesy stuff. The stuff gets cheesier as we go on, but um, first up, we have S Express, theme from S Express, a uh, huge number one hit in the UK in 88. Um, it's a bit of a, a house classic, um, and uh, they had several hits, actually. Um, I do have the 12-inch single of Superfly Guy, which was, I think, the follow-up to theme from S Express. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I think it was summer 88 that that was a hit. Next up, we have Ghosts by Japan, very unusual song uh, uh, and I would not have paid more than the minimum price for it to be absolutely honest with you but um, you know it's Japan it's new wave it's it's good stuff but yeah it, it is a very peculiar song if you guys want to look it up it's um yeah you'll see what I mean the the oh one thing I should mention as well almost all of these have picture sleeves the, a few of them don't but 90% of them do so so that was nice um next up we have opus live is life I never knew how to pronounce this. I'm pretty sure it's Live is Life. It could be Live is Life, but <laughs> I'm 90% sure it's Live is Life because that's how the song goes. Um, I was a little surprised that nobody else bid on this. This is on the uh, on the blue Polydor label right here. Yeah, nobody else bid on it. I was um, kind of shocked by that because this is a bit of a classic song. When did this come out? 80, 84, okay, yeah. That was a big hit as well back in the day. Next up we have uh, Le Mal, The Never Ending Story. Of course, formerly the lead singer of Kajigugu. Um, this is, this, I, I used to love the movie, The Never Ending Story, when I was a kid. This is a great track. This is a great movie song. It really is. Um, let's see what label this is. This is on EMI, Silver EMI. And of course, with these being um, uh, British pressings, I think all of them do not have the jukebox cut out, which I, I much prefer, much prefer. I mean, for one thing, you know where you stand with them. With a, When a record's been played in a jukebox, you really, I mean, it's, you're kind of, it's really hit or miss. I've had a, a, a number of, of 45s like that where they've been virtually unplayable. You know, ones that I bought in a lot or something, or even ones that I bought at a store, uh, but you know, I wasn't able to play it till I got home. And even if they look okay, then they're really not. So at least with these, I know they haven't been played in the jukebox. Anyway, let's move on. Next up we have um, 
Aretha Franklin and George Michael, I knew were waiting for me. One of my favorite songs of the 80s. I actually already have a US version of this, um, but it's only in so-so condition. And uh, so I, I stuck in a bid for like the minimum 99p price and ended up winning it. So uh, pleased with that. It's on the Epic label right there. Record looks good, so hopefully it plays better than the one I already have. Uh, next up, we have <laughs> the Time Lords, Doctor in the TARDIS. Quick shout out to my friend Gregory Short, who's a big Doctor Who fan. Um, this, I'm going to be honest, is a terrible track, but it was terrible deliberately. So essentially, the Time Lords were the KLF, and for those of you who know about the KLF, they were a little, let's say they were rather anti-establishment. <laughs> Uh, in general, but you know, a certainly anti uh, pop music establishment, and um, this was a this was sort of a uh, a joke record that they that they put out under the name the Time Lords. I think they claimed that the the car was like the lead singer or something, and um, yeah, it, it, they didn't take it seriously, but they uh, they had written. I don't know if it was a book or maybe it was some sort of a, 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 a pamphlet or something. It was along the lines of uh, how to have a number one record. And they said they were all, you know, there were a number of sort of you know, bullet points that one had to follow. And it, it didn't really matter how bad the song was. If you, if you, if you were to abide by uh, this list, you could have a hit record. So that's kind of what this was about. It was proving their own point. And I don't even I, I even know what music to what genre to, to classify this as because um, I mean the normal KLF stuff is house music or stadium house specifically. This has shades of it, but it, it's really not not house music. But um, anyway, it, it got to number one in England. Obviously, a lot of a lot of terrible novelty records have reached number one or been hits in the UK over the decades and I might even make a video about that at some point but uh, <laughs> there's, there's more of them coming in the stack believe me but but um, it's, it's one of those crazy songs 1988 it got to number one and you know all right next up uh, this one I was really pleased to win because I was gonna buy this on its own on eBay I've been looking for it and it's kind of pricey and so I I stuck in I think I put I was gonna go up to like three or four bucks on it uh, but I ended up winning it for the minimum price. So it's uh, Ryan Paris, Dolce Vita. This is a um, a synth pop classic. It's a great track. There's been a couple of versions of this song, but this is this was always my favorite. It's on, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, Carrera or Carrera uh, record. That's the label right there. Uh, released in 1983. And uh, there's a fair chance, even if you think you don't know it, you'll know the hook to it. The, the little keyboard um, riff that it has. Um, it's a really good track. Next up we have Inner City, Big Fun. Um, this and Good Life were by far the two most well-known songs. Uh, good Life's a better track, and actually this seller did have Good Life for sale, I bid on it, but somebody else outbid me. But uh, Big Fun was released first, and it's very similar to Good Life, actually. <laughs> good Life kind of, Big Fun, or, um, Inner City almost ripped off their own song, Big Fun, when they came out with Good Life, but, but yeah, it's a, it's a great track, it's on the, uh, the 10, yeah, 10, uh, 10 records, uh, label, and it's, uh, it's pretty standard, yet really good, late 80s house music. Next up we have, oh yeah, uh, Giorgio Moroder and Phil Oki together in Electric Dreams. Um, another synth pop classic, this is a great track. Uh, this is on Virgin Records, nice white and pink label right there. And uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this track. Um, I don't remember it being a massive hit, but it's sort of a little before my time. Uh, 1984, so I was five years old. I, I don't remember this being in the charts, but I, I mean, I know the song. I've heard it plenty of times over the years, and it's a, it's a really, really good track. Okay, The Wizard by Paul Hardcastle. 
Now, Paul Harcastle, of course, um, his by far his most famous song was 19, which, uh, yeah, I have the 12-inch single like that. Uh, but this, um, uh, this song was probably, at least at its peak, better known to British audiences because even if they didn't think they knew it, once, once they heard it, they would know it. This was the theme song to Top of the Pops for a number of years, for, well, a few years anyway, uh, released in 86. Um, it's on the Blue Chrysalis label right there. always like that label. And it's uh, pop music, but synthesizer heavy pop music. Next up we have Zoom by Fat Larry's band. And again, I was stoked that the seller had, uh, had listed this because this had been on my wish list as well. And, it, and it's not cheap to buy this on its own on eBay. Um, I was looking, it was shipping. It was you know, gonna be like 10 bucks or something. Um, oh, and I should mention that just like the uh, first sale that, that the seller had, it was free worldwide shipping. So all I paid was um, the cost of the records. And this came out in 1982. Um, I'll tell you where I first heard this song. This won't mean anything to, to anybody outside of Britain probably, but there is an episode of the British sitcom Only Fools and Horses. In fact, I think it was the Christmas special at the end of the first season or maybe, maybe at the end of the second season. And it's called Diamonds Are For Heather. And this song is played. Um, quite a long, a large chunk of the song is played in in that episode, and I always loved it. It's a really nice track. It's a it's a pop song, but it's again, it's some um, pretty synth heavy. Uh, it's it's got a, a a bridge to it that's got this sort of uh, uh, nice buzzing synthesizer tune to it. Uh, next up, we have okay, seventies. This is from nineteen seventy nine, I think. Yeah. The Bee Gees, Spirits Having Flown. One of my favorite Bee Gees tracks. Did not own it on vinyl. Now I do. Uh, next up, I think this, this also might be late 70s or 1980 maybe. Uh, let's see. 1980. Uh, Roxy Music, Oh Yeah on the Radio. One of my favorite songs by Roxy Music. And I didn't have it, so wanted to grab that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Bomb the bass, don't make me wait on side A and mega blast on side B. Um, this is a house classic, it really is. Don't make me wait is, is a sensational track. Um, but mega blast as well also has its own history behind it. Um, it was later used by the video game uh, coders, um, the Bitmap Brothers, for their game Xenon 2, which was a shoot 'em up that was really big on like the Atari ST and the Amiga. And uh, I always like I like the label this is on. What um, I'm trying to see uh, which record company it is. Oh well, Rhythm King in association with Mute Records. Okay, but it's kind of got this white and green swirl thing going on. And then we've got for Mega Blast, we've got the <laughs> the radiation symbol there. Yeah. So yeah, absolute house classic. This came out in 80, 88 or eighty nine. Um, uh, doesn't say. Well, I'm, I, it was 88 or 89. Next up, I love, I love this cover. Uh, Hot House Flowers, Don't Go. Don't Go, look at that with the kid, like like the the mother or father's like leaving or something and they've got their hands, their hands held out. It's kind of sad. Um, this was uh, 1988, I believe. Yeah, 1988. It's a nice song. It's just uh, it's a fairly uh, I'd say it's more a uh, more of an adult pop song. It's not like cheesy pop. Uh, it's on the London Records label right there. And indeed, the next one as well, I would in a way lump in with that category, although it's definitely more poppy than Hot House Flowers. But uh, Hue and Cry, Labor of Love, from 1987, my all-time favorite year of music. I always love this track. Um, this is on Circa Records right there. Um, pretty big hit, top top ten hit in England. Um, was later it was later re-released in '93 as well. Um, I don't remember how, where it charted in '93, but uh, but yeah. Next up we have a Love Supreme by Will Downing. 
I've always liked this song. Didn't have it on vinyl till now. Uh, it's a uh, it's soul, but with a beat to it. You know, it's got a pop beat to it. And uh, this is on. Let's see. Oh, Fourth and Broadway. Um, Fourth and Broadway label. And yeah, I always liked it. So I was really pleased to find that. Next up, we have another "Living in the Box" um, single. This one is "Room in Your Heart." It's a nice ballad. I, I like. I always liked it. Uh, I, I think they kind of got a bit of a. <laughs> this song got a bit of a bad rap. But I don't know why. It's on. Here we go. It's on the Chrysalis label right there. It's got a really nice chorus to it. So I don't know. And uh, a little unusual, although I have seen these before. But it has a, a fold out. Um, uh, fold out sleeve. I think I have one or two singles that are like that, but not very many. Uh, next up, we have Mirage and Jack Mix 2. Um, it's a house track uh, with various samples in it. Um, the samples include Jack Your Body, that would be um, Steve Seal Curly, Respectable by Mel and Kim, Showing Out by Mel and Kim, Male Stripper, which was I think Man to Man was the name of the, the artist. Axel F, uh, Harold uh, Fortemeyer. Uh, Jackin, I don't know who that's by. And Underwater, I don't know who that's by either. But uh, yeah, this is a, it's just a big hit. Top 10 hit in 87. It's on, uh, let's see. Hmm. Don't recognize the label, but debut. I like the color though. Debut Records. Next up, speaking of house classics, it, it really doesn't get more classic than Pump Up the Volume by Mars. I mean, it, it really doesn't. Um, it's just now the fir third copy I have of this, but the other two copies I have of the US version, I have the seven and 12 inch singles of the US mix. Um, this is the UK one, which is vastly superior to the US one. I'm sorry to say. The US one has different samples in it. They're not as good. It doesn't have as many samples in it, but yeah, look at that, it's just beautiful. Look at that label. Um, big hit in 87, UK number one. And uh, yeah, again, I, I don't think anybody else bid on this, which surprised me. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up we have huh, Enigma. Now, not that Enigma. <laughs> not, not the Enigma who did Return to Innocence, but um, before them, there was a different Enigma. This is Ain't No Stopping Disco Mix from 1981. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's um, it's a bunch of songs mixed together, like "Ain't No Stopping Us Now," "La Freak," um, "Jump to the Beat," "Use It Up, Wear It Out," what else? "The Hustle," "Oops Upside Your Head," and several more. But it's not the original artist. It at least not from what I remember. It, it they've been um, uh, it's like Star Sound Forty Five, right? Star Sound. They've uh, um put together their own vocals they got session singers in and, and um but i i like the song it's it's a good it's good you know next up we have um gwen guthrie ain't nothing going on but the rent uh bit of a dance a very early dance classic this from the mid 80s 86 uh what label is this on this is on oh polydor um this is another one nobody else bid on it i couldn't believe it it's a classic yeah. Um, next, uh, oh yeah, Maxi Priest in a cover version of Cat Stevens' Wild Wild. I this is a this is a I honestly I'm going to be honest with you I prefer this version of it to Cat Stevens. That's probably blasphemous. Um, I always liked this song, like quite a lot of people probably. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to think it was Wide World and not Wild World just because of how it so sounds when he sings it. Um, big top ten hit in '88 in the UK. Uh, <laughs> next up we have, well it's not really cheesy, but you guys might be surprised. Um, you know, I, I'm browsing through all the records this guy has for sale, which took a while, I had over a thousand of them. And uh, I see this and I, I, got a, I got a bit on it because I, I had this as a kid. The music of Torval and Dean. <laughs> it's a seven inch single, it has four tracks on it, so it's more of an EP. Um, and the label as well, when I, when I uh, the label on the record. This was so nostalgic when I saw it. I was like, that's it. That's the label right there. With the, the pink and white sort of checkered thing going on. Um, 
it's on the Safari label, which actually didn't last much longer after this. So they, I don't know, went bankrupt or something. But um, so Torval and Dean, if anybody doesn't know, they were uh, British uh, ice skaters, ice dancers specifically. Uh, and I used to love them when I was a kid. Um, I mean, I liked their music more than anything that they would dance to more because uh, I, I was a little bit young when um, when they were winning like gold medals, Olympic gold medals and whatever. The last one that they won, which uh, uh, was um, the 84 Olympics and uh, Winter Olympics, uh, I was only, I don't even think I quite turned five yet. And so then like a year or whatever later, the record came out and I do remember having this. I don't remember how we got it, if it came in the mail, if probably my parents bought it, I don't know. But, you know, you guys know I'm all about the nostalgia and I, I, I had to bid on it. All right, now we're heading into the cheesy stuff, okay? Most of this stuff's real cheesy. Uh, fair, fair notice has been given. There's a little bit of a stack still to go through, but we've gotten through about two thirds of it. So. First up we have Do the Conga by Black Lace. <laughs> I had to get it. This was a this was played at all of the school and church discos that I used to go to as a kid. Um, Black Lace were, were a duo, you can see them right there. The music was terrible. I'm not i I'm not even gonna make excuses for it. It it was. It was um it was pop music that for for the most part, most of their songs were designed um, to to have actions or special dances done to them. Like, you know, you guys know, you know, the, the conga line with this. Well, there's another black lace coming up in a minute. But um, uh, yeah, you had to do all these crazy actions to some of the songs. And, and it sounds ridiculous, but actually it was perfect for their target audience, for kids at the discos, you know, young people. You know, the, the DJ would get up and do the actions. He would follow along and I, I don't know. Nostalgia. <laughs> it's not always logical. Uh, next up, uh, oh, actually, this one isn't cheesy. Not but well, maybe a little bit, but not not too cheesy. Uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Didn't have it on vinyl. Pleased to have it. Uh, big UK number one in 1983. Uh, it's not a really funny label though. Really, well, it's CBS, but I'd never seen this imprint before. Exactly like that. I thought that was a little strange. But uh, yeah, like I said, big big number one hit in 83. And uh, I think this was another one where I just bid the, uh, the minimum, the 99p, and ended up, ended up winning it. All right, next up we have, okay, this one is a little bit cheesy, but Mel and Kim, that's the way it is. Um, Mel and Kim, of course, were twin sisters. They only ever had a few hits before um, Mel tragically died. She had spinal cancer, but I like the sleeve of this. You can turn it either way up. It kind of looks the same. <laughs> um, yeah, this is uh, this is the song. That's the way it is. Which uh, it was a top ten hit. I, yeah, I think it was uh, in 1988. Um, let's see, Supreme Records. I actually don't recognize that label, but um, and this was their final hit, at least together together before Mel. I think Mel didn't. I think she didn't die for maybe a year or one to two years. Um, after this, it was like maybe 1990 that she passed away. I forget exactly, but but yeah, very um, very sad. They were a, a stock aching Waterman product, um, but um, along with this next guy here, Rick Astley, she wants to dance with me. So we're going to keep the cheese coming. The cheese, the the the, the cheese fondue is flowing nicely now. Um, this song was actually written by Rick himself. He's not a bad songwriter. It's on the RCA label, same as his uh, album or albums were back then. And uh, yeah, I think this is uh, like a number, I wanna say this got to number four in the UK in 1988, uh, late 88. Uh, next up we have Nick Kamen, Loving You Is Sweeter Than Ever. Um, it's 87, yeah, 1987. I actually thought it was earlier than that. I thought it was 86, but um, anyway, this is a pretty big hit. It's on the, uh, the Warner, WEA label right here. Um, next up we have Do They Know It's Christmas by Band-Aid 2. I do have the original 7-inch single of, you know, Do They Know It's Christmas by Band-Aid. 
from 1984, but this was a follow-up five years later. Um, they re-released it, but with, with it was re-recorded with a new artist. Um, I always liked it. It's a good track. Uh, I think people compared it to the original, which was fair. It made sense. Um, and it, 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 it probably wasn't as good as the original. Some people didn't like the production values because uh, it was um, produced by Stock Aching Waterman who were all the rage. I mean, 89 was their year when this came out. I mean, they had a bunch of number one singles, but but it's still got, you know, let me read out the list of artists. Uh, Banana Rama, Big Fun, Brass, Kathy Dennis, D-Mob, Jason Donovan, Kevin Godley, Glenn Goldsmith, Kylie Minogue, The Pasadenas, Chris Rear, Cliff Richard, Jimmy Somerville, Sonia, Lisa Stansfield, Technotronic, and Wet Wet Wet, although Technotronics has been, Technotronic has been misspelled. Uh, with an S at the end of it, Technotronics, but, uh, but yeah, you know, um, it's on the Polydor label right there, and it's a good song, it is, it's much better than the more recent versions anyway. <laughs> uh, next up, next up, some more cheese, here we go, uh, Rick is back, Rick Astley, Take Me To Your Heart, one of my favorite songs of his, just for reasons of nostalgia purely that um i do have the the album this is from hold me in your arms i have that on cd and she wants to dance with me is on that too but i uh, did not have it on vinyl so was, I think this is yeah again it's on the rca label just like the the earlier record that i showed and it's nostalgic because I, I remember being in the charts in late 88 like in christmas 88 and I have, I have fond memories of that as I do with this next song, this was also in the charts in late 88, and that is Missing You by Krista Berg. It's real cheesy, don't get me wrong, it's real cheesy pop music. But I always like it, what can I say? I was nine years old, you know. This is on the uh, uh, A&M uh, rec uh, records label. But uh, yeah, this is another one I think I put in like the minimum bid, nobody else bid on it, which I was less surprised about with. <laughs> with this but uh let's see also from late 88 a little bit of a theme here whitney houston one moment in time one of my favorite songs of hers actually it's really good on the uh uh arista label so next up we have oh now, now it's getting a little cheesy again Billy Ocean, Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car, huge hit in 1988, got to number three in England, I believe, um, it's on the, uh, the Jive label, so uh, yeah, not much else to say about that, now, <laughs> so us Brits have a habit of, and I mentioned this earlier, of sending horrendous novelty songs to number one in the charts there are countless examples of it dozens of examples of it um or at least you know into like the top five or top ten of the charts this one is no exception it's a horrific song but i always wanted it as a kid i never had it now i do and that is the chicken song by spinning image <laughs> i think um i think uh, uh steve witty showed this recently I think he got, I, I, I hope I have the right person. I, I think he did. I'm sorry if I got, if I got the wrong person, but um, yeah, here's the, uh, the label. It's, so let, let's, let's back up. Um, Spitting Image was a TV show, a satire show featuring puppets, these guys here, but they were, you know, made to look like exaggerated versions of personalities, especially politicians. So they did like Ronald Reagan and Thatcher, the Queen. Um, I don't even know who any of these people are supposed to be in here anymore. I, I can't remember, but um, and obviously the next logical step was to have a number one record. <laughs> it's a it, it's a terrible song, but I, it was a huge hit, big number one in eighty six, I think. Uh, yeah, eighty six. And again, I don't think anybody else bid on it, so I had to I had to grab it. Uh, next up, oh yeah, this is getting pretty cheesy again. Bruce Willis, Under the Boardwalk. He's actually a, not a bad singer. It's a nice version of it. This, is a, this was a massive hit. 
I think it was a big hit in the US as well. Um, uh, it's on Motown. Very cool. It's a nice, uh, more modern Motown label. The 1987. Uh, let me see. I, I'm trying to think where. I think it got to number two in England. I'm pretty sure it did. Now, <laughs> possibly one of the worst number ones in British history. And we've had a fair few bad ones, don't get me wrong, but this one is right up there. <laughs> you might wonder why I would buy these, but again, a, a lot of it's born out of nostalgia. And when I play some of these songs, even if I know objectively they're bad, okay? And I'm not claiming that they're not. Even if I know they're bad objectively, it still brings a smile to my face just because of the nostalgia and how ridiculous some of the music is. But, and that is, well, let, let me preface. Okay, so you know how, I think it's coming up soon, right? Red Nose Day, Comic Relief, at least in the US it is. I've seen the Red Noses in, um, in Walgreens, but uh, uh, Comic Relief, I th think, started in the UK in the late 80s. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, it's, it's quarter past midnight here, so <laughs> I think it did. And um, anyway, uh, it's become sort of a tradition for a novelty song to be released for comic relief and this is one of the early ones it's not quite where it all started but it's a very early one and that is the stonk by hail and pace and the stonkers now hail and pace were a pair of comedians there they are wearing their red noses looking ridiculous um and I don't even know what to say about it. It, it, it. The song is utterly bizarre. It, it, it really is. What label is this on? Oh, London, London Records. Um, it's an utterly bizarre. I guess it's a pop song, but it it it's got. Um, I don't know. The, the, you can see from these guys there's some sort of dance that you're supposed to do to this thing, and uh, but obviously got to number one. I mean, why wouldn't it, right? I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, that was the 1991 comic relief theme song of sorts. Next up, we're going back to Black Lace, and that is Agadoo. This is a huge hit. I think it might have even been number one or a top three anyway. And uh, let's see, 1983, four, something like that. Um, 84. It's on the Flare Records, as was the other Agadoo single that we looked at. Uh, I'm sorry, the other Black Lace single that we looked at. But Agadoo, uh, this this was their biggest hit. And there were all these actions to it. The actions are on the, on, are on the back here. Now, if you're wondering why the actions are being described by a pineapple, well, that's because the lyrics say, uh, what is it, push pineapple, shake a tree or something. It's, it, it, the, the lyrics are nonsensical, but there's all these actions. You can imagine, you got a room full of kids at like a disco or whatever. I mean, they're all for it. We used to do it, like at the school or at the church disco. Everybody would do the actions. I mean, looking back on it, it was horrific, but <laughs> you kind of cringe. But but in some ways, isn't that what it's about? Actually having fun with it, with the music. Um, uh, you don't get songs like that now. You don't. It, it's all... Uh, well, I touched on this in my last video um, for, for Hannah, the Omaha introvert, uh, for her contest, where I was talking about how this decade's, my, the, in my opinion, the worst decade for music that there's been, because everything's auto-tuned, everything is now digitized and um, artificial. Do you know? I mean, some of this stuff was terrible, but in, it, it seemed more real at the time, because uh, at least people were trying to having fun trying trying to have fun and now even the songs that the kids buy they're all they've all got drug and sex references and um and you know i'm, I'm not a prude there's there's certainly a time and a place for that i just think that songs that are clearly marketed towards children maybe maybe that's not not the right setting for it but you know i'm starting to show my age but okay we've got we do have a couple more novelty songs, I'm afraid, um, but we've only got three left, three records left. <laughs> Andy Stewart, Donald Wears Your Trousers, not trousers, but trousers. Now, this originally came out, I think in the 60s, maybe in the 50s, does it say on here what the original, 1960s, the original copyright on this. Um, 
I think it was maybe a minor hit, or I, I don't even know if it was a hit. It was re-released in 1989. I think it. I think it was in a commercial, something like that. And um, so they released a single. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, and it was a big, it was a big hit. It's so, again, it's it's terrible, but it's so catchy. It really is. It's this this Scottish guy, and if he's not Scottish, he's at least doing a very convincing impression because he has a Scottish accent. And um, <laughs> I don't know. Look at the artwork on it, jeez. But again, I was like ten years old when this song came out. I remember being played at discos and and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, two more left, um, and these are actually both from the 90s. First up is Ain't No Doubt by Jimmy Nail. Um, this was, uh, let's see, was it number one? No, I think it got to like three or something. Number three in the UK in 1992. Uh, it's a really good song. Jimmy Nail was a sort of a, a jack of all trades. Uh, he was an actor. Um, he, he had a hit in the mid 80s with um, Love, Love Ain't Here Anymore. Or, yeah, yeah, love ain't here anymore. Um, let's see what label this is on. This is on the oh EW East West label, right here. But yeah, big hit in the UK, and it's a good, it's a good, decent pop song. And then last but not least, this is from 1991. Speaking of novelty songs. <laughs> The UK Mix Masters, The Bare Necessities Mega Mix. Now, this was the staple of any... Well, actually, I think I was just about a little bit too old for discos by 1991. But I, I remember this being in the charts. And it includes, yeah, I Want to Be Like You and The Bare Necessities. It's just like a, a dance remix of the songs. <laughs> uh, it wasn't a huge hit in the UK. I think it got to like 20-something. It's on Kinect Records' label. Um, it, it was a little more notorious for its video which had uh, Gary uh, Wilmot, um, was it Wilmot or Wilmots? I don't think it had an S, Gary Wilmot, who was, he was sort of like a kids TV presenter, but he, he, he presented or was in a bunch of different shows. Um, him dancing to this, uh, it, he later said it was the most embarrassing moment of his career. <laughs> but it's good fun. Look, let me look it up on YouTube. It's good. I mean, you know, it's terrible, but it's it's good fun. And again, the nostalgia factor. So, um, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for sitting through that. Um, pretty big haul, you know. I feel like the first half we had a lot of kind of really good classic stuff. The second half, not so much. A lot of <laughs> a lot of cheese, but um, um, you know, without the cheese, how could we appreciate a fine wine? See, I just thought of that. You know. <laughs> All right, guys, um, appreciate everybody who uh, comments and subscribes. And uh, yeah, until next time, everybody. Bye-bye.